Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Celtics made light work of the Mavericks in game one. And speaking of light, are the lights too bright for Dallas? Plus, is Dan Hurley going to be the next Lakers head coach? Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. It was game one of the NBA Finals, finally here after what seemed like a month and a half off. And uh, maybe the Mavericks didn't know that it had started. A 107-89 game one win in Boston at the TD Garden. Our friends John Corrales from Locked On Celtics and Nick Angstadt from Locked On Mavericks. If we have to uh, separate them at any point in this conversation, we will. Gentlemen, um, I, look, oh, we know. Good. We know that that's oh, not going to happen. We know. We, we know. Um, <laughs> John, let's start with you, though, because Chris Tapps did come back in a big way in this game off the bench, 20 points in just 21 minutes. Yeah, huge. And didn't skip a beat, right? He just comes in and starts doing the same stuff that he's been doing, hitting three-pointers, uh, got a blow-by on Derek Lively for a big dunk, uh, blocking shots, hit three block shots on the night. Uh, doing a little bit of everything. But coming off the bench was a little bit of a surprise, although uh, Al Horford said, yeah, we kind of knew this was going to happen. I think they liked Porzingis on that lively matchup. I think they wanted Horford on the Gafford matchup, and, you know, it all worked out. Once Porzingis came in the game, it was a back-and-forth game. Porzingis comes in, and, and things start to break wide open because he's just, you know, he changes so much for the Celtics. Yeah, that was something that, that, John, you and I talked about going into the game is that he just offensively, he can do so much to relieve the pressure for this team. Nick, um, uh, the the other side of this is the two big stars for the Dallas Mavericks. You get a 30-point game from Luka Doncic, but Kyrie Irving goes six for 19, and the two combine to go just four for 17 from three. Is this as simple as just like, hey, if those guys make some shots, this is a very different game? They did make shots in the third quarter. They made those shots, yep. and they got it to an eight-point game, and then Kyrie had a three to cut it to five, and their offense just completely shut off for whatever reason. I mean, maybe it was the Celtics' defense. Maybe it was the Mavs just missing their shots. But the Mavs did have a chance in this one. I mean, the, Luka, 30 points. He can get his own. He can score on anybody on, on the Celtics' team, and I think that's something that you take away from this. But one assist. They took away the thing that they wanted to take away, the extra yeah. passes, the other guys making making shots like that. The lobs at the rim were completely shut off, completely in this game, where the Mavs have dominated, had the most dunks of any team in this playoff so far. And so that's an area where the Mavs desperately have to find some other way to get those shots. Can I tell you a little story real quick? Please. Where we're at the, at the practice facility, and NBA TV is on after a Joe Missoula press conference, and they're talking about how it's imperative that they're going to take away the lob. And he looks at that and turns and looks at me and goes, we're going to take that away. <laughs> okay, we're going to take that away, and we're going to give something else up. I want you to talk about why other things are happening, but we are going to take that away, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, and, and you guys actually argued over this. I remember from, from your, your crossover shows about how the Celtics – we're going to handle um, Luca versus the other guys. John, did this go about as well as they, they could have planned? Exactly how I laid it out. To be honest, <laughs> like you, you play uh, uh, Luca straight up as much as you can. You blitz him sometimes. You throw everything you can. Sometimes you switch, but nothing where you're putting yourself into rotation where you're giving up open looks. Uh, you take away things, even if you have to foul every once in a while, right? There's a couple of fouls on potential lobs. You just make the other team think. You make Lively think like, oh, Porzingis just kind of slid under me, and you know, I, I, maybe I'm not going to go for that lob. You just do the little things to take away where Luka is most dangerous. And he's most dangerous when he racks up 10, 11 assists to go along with the 30 points he's going to get no matter what. So the plan was always limit his passing opportunities you try to shut Kyrie Kyrie's water off and try to keep him from scoring you keep him inefficient and you challenge that rookie center that has been at the center of a lot of things that they've done well like mission accomplished one two three they got it all done Nick are you surprised that it worked as well as it did 
I'm surprised about how they came out. I mean, I'm not surprised that the, the, their game plan worked because this is a very good Celtics team. They're a good defensive team. They have a bunch of different options. Their offense has a ton of different options. Jason Tatum was not very good in this game, and the Celtics still bl blew out the Mavericks. Yeah. I am surprised about how differently the Mavs came out compared to the Celtics. If you looked at these two teams and you say, and you would have known, oh, one team had like 10 plus days off, didn't really get tested too much throughout their run to the playoffs. You would think it would have been the Mavericks that were the ones that were tired and didn't have enough and came out rusty and all that instead of the Celtics. And the Mavs just came out, looked real flat in that first quarter, and they just really couldn't dig themselves out of it. And to me, that's the surprising part of it. Stay up to date on the Boston Celtics all year by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Celtics on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. John Corrales is going to be live at these games. Don't miss it. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, how can the Mavs even the series? Before we get to that, we have our newest dynasty. Game time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even easier and faster. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They're obsessed with finding ways to save you money on tickets. Game Time has deals right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time will credit you. 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the free app and new users can get $20 off your first purchase with code locked on. Terms apply. That's code locked on for $20 off your first purchase with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. If you're catching this episode after hearing your favorite locked on show, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Sports today on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. The Oklahoma Sooners softball team have achieved something few teams rarely do. They are a dynasty. The Sooners have made it to five straight Women's College World Series. And after sweeping their rival Texas Longhorns, they have pulled off the four peat. With both schools moving to the SEC this July, three of the final four teams in the tournament will have come from what is soon to be the SEC. Now for a story I never thought I would get to tell you. In a way, I, I never thought I would. In cricket, in cricket, I finally get to proudly go, USA, USA. The United States cricket team beat Pakistan at the Men's T20 Cricket World Cup. The United States in cricket. In a scary scene, Kansas City Chiefs defensive lineman B.J. Thompson was taken to the hospital after suffering a seizure and going into cardiac arrest on Thursday. Thompson is in stable condition. For now, keep up to date on the latest with Locked On Chiefs wherever you get your podcasts. The Minnesota Timberwolves may be on the rise, but also in the process of being sold. And this has become a saga. We officially get to tag it with saga. Because on Thursday, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, failed presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg, joined the Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez group that has been trying to buy the franchise for three years. Yes, trying and nearly succeeding until they didn't. And now we're not sure exactly what's going on, except that now Michael Bloomberg is involved. This is a wild story that is only going to continue to be wild, Locked on Wolves, of course, will have the latest there. And NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said on Thursday that the league will begin to explore expansion. You know, uh, for a league that is going to expand to Vegas, a really bad poker face. We have known for years that this is coming. Now, it hasn't happened since 2004. The Charlotte Bobcats were the last expansion team. But Silver said that it's on the agenda, but not guaranteed. Sure, Adam. Seattle and Las Vegas, congratulations. You're gonna have a team soon. So let's shift the focus a little bit here to game two. Uh, and Nick, th this is gonna have the Mavericks then on the back heel, they're down 0-1 in a finals. So you're gonna have to win four of these last six games if you wanna win the NBA finals. 26%, a shade under 26% from the three point line in this one. Uh, they have to make some shots. How can they find a better offense? 
Yeah, Peter, uh, the Mavs have the Celtics exactly where they want them. <laughs> with, the, with the game one loss, the Mavs lost, and it, they d got destroyed by the Clippers in their game one. They got destroyed by the Thunder in their game one. They get destroyed by the, the Celtics in, in their game one. So this Mavs team. And, and know, the Celtics were, destroyed the Warriors a couple years ago in their game one. That's right. And the, the Mavs were 0-5 and five in game ones under Jason Kidd as the head coach, and they've won the majority of their playoff series that they've played under Jason Kidd. This Mavericks team, there's a couple of things that I think help them in going forward. The, their defense kind of warms up. It's sort of like they need to have the rhythm of the other team, and I think in this game even you saw it. 37 points in the first quarter, didn't score the same in the second or the third or even you know the yeah. fourth when it was still competitive. And so I think their defense sort of figured out the rhythm. They've got a, a lot of young guys that haven't been here before. Now they have. They've played a game. So at least you have that under your belt. And the shots, like, I, I think it only comes down to Kyrie's got to be better. Like, he's just got to be better. And maybe some of those open shots go down. There's a bunch of open shots that didn't. But Kyrie was absolutely awful. I think he, succ he succumbed to some of the pressure. Uh, six of 19 from the field. Just did not get it done. Just some really awful mistakes. This crowd was on him. Like, they were on him the yeah. entire time. They did not let up. He did not get the ball. And there was not a Kyrie sucks or a <laughs> boo or something. From this crowd, I mean, give give credit to them. They were ready to go, and they did, they do not collect Kyrie and like company. A I couple, don't. a couple, but I be honest with you, I thought it was going to be worse. I didn't think the crowd was as bad as they could have been to Kyrie. I thought, I heard it <laughs> much. You heard it here first from John Krause. Be worse to Kyrie, guys. <laughs> I, heard, I heard, I've heard much much worse when Kyrie has come to town. Well, being I'm here, I bet you have. I feel like maybe the crowd has softened up a little bit on Kyrie. It's it's only been booze, a couple of those other chants, but yeah, it's you know. well, it's it's a little different too when you're up 20. It, it takes the uh, the blow sure. out of it a little, a little bit. You have to do that, um, John. If you're if you're nervous about one thing, maybe not nervous, but if you're like, okay, it, there, there is this one thing that makes me go, okay, game two can be different. Why is it? Yeah, well, look, Boston's got two two losses this playoffs and both of them are game twos at home so we know that that's not guaranteed I, i'm nervous about luca for sure he's gonna come out much much better i'm nervous about Kyrie. he's gonna shoot better i think the defense on Kyrie was really excellent though and i think that's I, i'm not thinking like he's gonna come out and and, and just play the exact same game and just hit shots because if, if, if they defend him the exact same way he's gonna struggle again but luca's gonna hit shots and, and that's going to change the dynamic a little bit. They're going to figure some stuff out. They're going to figure out how to get their bigs free a little bit. So I, I'm curious to see what the Celtics do in return. Do they continue to, to bring Porzingis off the bench? Is that going to be how this series goes? Do they change that up? Do they, what do they change up? Or do they just keep going with what they've been doing here in game one and say, we're going to challenge the Mavs to be better and and even if Luca goes for 45 if you can still take away his passing lanes I think the Celtics will be happy with that Nick the the Mavericks can win game two if Mavericks win game two if Luca comes out and he plays a great game he's got to he's got to have a great game against the Celtics team they're not this team does not have enough offensive firepower outside of him for him to be a 30 point game on you know 46 percent from the field with one assist it's just not good enough for him with the rest of this team i mean the reason why that they're here is because he's had excellent games he's played great in the clutch and they stayed connected the mavs have to stay connected in game two throughout this whole game there were times when this game just really got away from them and Kyrie being awful was one of the reasons why they did not stay connected so he's got to be better lucas got to be better and then some of the other guys there are a lot of mistakes from a lot of the the, the others too as well derrick john jr took it to the rim like three or four times in situations he absolutely should not have there are other moments in this game you know the bigs making mistakes lively the travel after that huge rebound in the third quarter that was during that run uh, there's a lot of little things like that they clean that up they play a little bit more poise and the two stars are better in their respective areas yeah Kyrie Irving Luka Doncic and PJ Washington combined to shoot four for 20 from three if that normalizes a little bit this game could have been a, 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 at least a little different um, and and we'll see in game two Might if they can make close. it happen Stay up to date on the Dallas Mavericks all year by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Mavericks on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, have the Lakers found their next head coach? And is he a podcast host? Well, maybe not. After initial reports that the Los Angeles Lakers were zeroing in on J.J. Redick as their next head coach, by the way, if they wanted a podcaster, I was available. On Thursday morning, new reports came out that the Lakers were targeting UConn head coach Dan Hurley. Hurley is expected to visit with the Lakers higher-ups on Friday. 
this is a real thing. Uh, but the Lakers have targeted Dan Hurley, the uh, head coach at UConn, uh, back-to-back national champion, UConn Huskies. Um, they are prepared to make a massive offer, which is, by the way, what it will take to uh, get Hurley to L.A., um, and uh, this is they're hoping to accelerate talks over the next few days. So you and I, uh, Andy, with Anthony Irwin and certainly over the course of the week on the shows by ourselves and all that, have really talked about the um, incredible lack of process, not even talking about. Uh, you know, something in terms of reflecting on J.J. Reddick, good, J.J. Reddick, bad. Uh, but just like, how did we get here? Um, I just finished my breakfast this morning, and it is uh, a little bit of that. <laughs> Eating some crow this morning because this news is, uh, as as dad used to say, like the apology line, I'm sorry, I was wrong, <laughs> please forgive me. This from the Lakers is the t- sort of transformative type, um, uh, you know, attempted hire, I guess, you know, that you would want them to be trying to make doesn't guarantee Hurley is going to be um, successful. But like this is the sort of big, bold move that also actually makes sense and ticks a lot of the boxes that the Lakers have been trying or saying that they've been trying to to make no one could blame hurley for choosing the lakers lebron james anthony davis the lakers los angeles the money no one would blame him for that but after kentucky made their play the lakers not making their play what if hurley was just like nah i'm good imagine how legendary how absolutely legendary he would be. He comes back to UConn saying thanks, but no thanks to two of the bluest blood basketball franchises that exist. And at UConn, three peating. In in an era where no one even repeats, much less three peats. That would be a true legend. Move Now, if he goes to L.A., no one's going to blame him. But that's the point. That's the point. No one would blame you for going to L.A., taking a truckload of money to coach the Lakers, to coach LeBron. And yes, there's going to be pressure accompanying that. Or you could stay at UConn and become something that very few people get to be. He's already a legend for going back to back. A UConn. We're talking all time pantheon kind of stuff. That would be tough to pass up to. But he's probably going to go to LA. And finally, we're used to hearing quarterbacks, receivers, linemen talk about bulking up because of the rigors of the NFL. Baltimore Ravens kicker Justin Tucker has said he's putting on weight in anticipation of being involved in tackles due to the new kickoff rules implemented this season. If I'm the Ravens, I'm going, Justin, you're one of the greatest kickers to ever live. We need you to make kicks. Please don't hurt yourself, A, working out, trying to add weight, or B, making tackles. We pay to make kicks. Please just make the kicks. If you're catching this episode after hearing your favorite Locked On show, make sure to subscribe to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. Also, if you're a new subscriber to Lost, we're here for you with the biggest stories in sports every day. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, we'll be one step closer to crowning an NBA Finals champion. So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.